of Autumn have invaded the volunteer campus. You know, General Nealon and Bear Bryant relish this kind of setting. They are the men who built the foundation for football in the SEC. And even though the torch has been passed, the intensity of this rivalry remains. Along the banks of the Tennessee River, the Crimson Tide has rolled into Knoxville. Seventh ranked Alabama against sixth ranked Tennessee. point missed the last time ball to tie it dead center well it was first and goal and it looked like Graham had the knee down early but it looked also as though there was no stop in Tennessee after that interception the game is tied with 941 remaining Fritz stands right now 13-13 2.35 remaining. Second and 12. Graham. Gaping hole. Graham breaks the tackle. Jerry Graham, touchdown, Tennessee. 79 yards. of frustration turned around on one carry by Jay Graham and Tennessee takes the 20 to 13 lead with 217 remaining you haven't heard us mention a fullback's name for Tennessee all day long but watch the fullback Eric Lane make the block that springs him for the long run and look at the hole after the block and the only guy who can make the play is number 20, Kev Kelvin Ziegler. He misses the play. He's got to make that play as a safety man. A free safety has got to make that play to stop the long touchdown run. Touchdown and an extra point to send this game into overtime. Overthrown. Billy Ratliff, number 40, put the pressure on Kitchens. Excellent pass rush that time. Hape was wide open. Kitchens just didn't have one. Once on fourth down on a superhuman effort by Riddle. They have the third down pass play for 56 yards. Is it a day of destiny for the Crimson Tide? Fourth and 10, 39 seconds. Kitchens, ball deflected, stripped away. Tennessee football, volunteers will win. Leonard Little, number one, against Pete DiMario. He's the guy that gets his hand on that ball and takes it out of Freddie Kitchens' arm. 
and have a chance at getting ultimately what they want so badly, the national championship. Tennessee will be heavily favored in its last five regular season games and in fact has not lost a game in November in the 90s. And that also has something to do with the fact Kentucky and Vanderbilt are always in that uh, equation in November, but they'll be favored the rest of the way. They could go 10 and 1, and if someone like Colorado beats Nebraska, it could be Florida and Tennessee and the Sugar Bowl. Absolutely could happen. What an effort by both teams. Philip Fulmer, Gene Stallings both had their clubs ready to play. It was a great college football game. This was college football, SEC style, through the years. For 104 years, Auburn and Georgia have been getting together to play football. They are schools with some of the most loyal and emotional fans in the country. And they feature two of the nation's great mascots, Ugga, the Georgia Bulldog, and Auburn's Tiger, the War Eagle. But the most important part of the rivalry is the game. Here's Auburn coach Terry Bowden. Now listen, men. We learned a great lesson last week. We learned a great lesson. Football has to be played with emotion. Great emotion. Great intensity. Esprit de corps, a team. Now, let's, let's go out there against this team now. Let's go out there and play our best football. We talked about what's on the line. It's Georgia versus Auburn for the 100th time from Auburn, Alabama. 107 left. Georgia down by seven without any timeouts. They have to go 82 yards for any chance of pulling this one out. The loss in Georgia would be eliminated from bowl consideration. A win keeps Auburn in position to share the SEC West title with their big game with Alabama next week. Bobo throws too high. Intended. Four wide receivers on the field. Bobo with time. Throws caught by Hines Ward. Inbounds, but they'll stop the clock to move the chains. Forward progress out to the 33-yard line. Jason Bray made the hit. But the clock will run as soon as they get the chain set. 53 seconds remaining. Clock running, 50 seconds left. Bobo under pressure, throws short. Edwards needs to get to the sideline and does at the 41, a gain of eight. Clock stopped, 43 seconds left. A spirited comeback by a Georgia team coming in off two disheartening losses. Four wide receivers, Edwards stayed in the block. Pass is caught at the 50 of first down. Matt Dixon, just his third catch of the year. He's a walk-on. Clock stop with 38 seconds left to move the chains. They're right on the 50-yard line, first and 10. Got to get down the field. Clock running. Bobo cannot afford to take a sack. Throws first down. They'll stop the clock again. Corey Allen held on to that one at the 38. They're moving up the field, but they're running out of time. You've got to get another 15-yard, 20-yard completion so you can take some realistic shots at the end zone at the end of the game. Chain set. Clock runs. Auburn leads by seven. No timeouts for Georgia. Bobo to the sideline. That is caught. Inbounds and then out of bounds goes Ward to stop the clock. First down at the 22. And Dan Evans, the defensive back, catches 175 yards for Ward. Bobo now 17 out of 32 off the bench for 293 passing. Now they can throw to the end zone. Bobo cannot take a sack and does! Back at the 35-yard line, a fatal mistake.
Sean, he didn't get much help, but you're 100% correct. In that situation, you got to throw the ball in the fifth row. It stops the clock, and you get they, an opportunity to try again. Fans boo because they did stop the clock to set the football down at the 31, gave them the chance to spike it, and now they'll have one shot at the end zone with one second left. <laughs> the clock was running for quite a while, then the officials stopped it with six seconds left to put the ball down at the 31. That gave them time to line up. They were looking like they thought the game was over. They weren't even hurrying back to line up for the spike. He saw Brian Smith with one shot. One second left. Down to the final play. Bobo throws it toward the end zone. It is caught at the goal line. Flag down. Touchdown, Georgia. Corey Allen. Flag in the end zone. Think Corey Allen made up for those two drop passes earlier? Unless he pushed off in the end zone, the answer is yes. Yep, yep. Bobby Bowden said the climb. Interference, defense, touchdown. <laughs> Corey Allen, who had a couple of big drops here in the fourth quarter, now puts his name in the history books in the 104 year ledger of this great rivalry i don't understand how he gets an isolation one they put trips to the field and left him by himself but there still has to be help over there with them you can't have a one-on-one -on -one in that situation and when they recount the great games in this 100 meeting rivalry they'll talk about game number 100 and the clock that stopped for a moment with six seconds to keep georgia alive now they need the extra point to force overtime it's Hap Hines, the son of the Supreme Court judge in the state of Georgia who talked about not feeling pressure because his dad experiences so much pressure in his job. I think Hap probably feels it now. <laughs> the freshman from Marietta trying to send it in overtime. No time on the clock. It is good. good. We've got two wide receivers down at the bottom of the screen. Corey Allen is going to make the break to the corner of the end zone. The contact on the end zone with Jason Bray, but he's big enough and strong enough to isolate himself against Bray. To force the overtime. On second and ten, a blitz. Craig runs away from it. Craig has one in Sean, it seems like about five hours ago, but in the open of the whole program, we talked about the difference in the game can be Damian Craig because of his running ability, and that's exactly what happened on that play. You can't let him break contain. Jared Holmes for the big extra point. It is good, so Georgia will need seven on the upcoming possession to force another overtime. Pretty good coverage in the secondary. He gets flushed outside, but there's no contain. At this point, you've got Damian Craig, who runs about a 4-4-5-40 on the corner. Nobody touches that. Defensive backs were in man-to-man -man coverage with their backs turned to the quarterback. Edwards, the long back. He gets it on the delay. Running right. Trying to turn the corner. Edwards launches. Touchdown! Track beat has begun. First touchdown of the football game for Robert Edwards. His seventh of the season. Hines needs the extra point to force the second overtime. 35-34. Kick is good. We head for a second overtime. Jim Donnan is used to this overtime procedure from his time coaching at 1AA Marshall over the last six years.
Donnan's version of the counter tray. Here comes Rusty Beatles, number 70, out front. But the good dip and then the break back outside is the key to the play. Watch the dive. That's just a great athlete making it. 56 yards today. They try the same play. Edwards, touchdown. That time they did not trip him up from behind. He goes in from just inside the five. And Georgia has the lead. And the pressure will be on the Auburn offense when it retakes the field. to try the extra point it is good Auburn will need seven on the upcoming possession or George is the winner key block here by on the touchdown play number 69 their left excuse me the right tackle right here is going to come over and kick out and then the big block for Edwards. There comes the right tackle. The guard makes his block, and now watch the tackle make his block. Step inside, touchdown, Robert Edwards. McLeod and Beasley in the eye. And it is a touchdown. It was easy, two plays, and Beasley took it in from three yards out. And they still need the extra point to force a third overtime. John, most coaches we've talked to have not liked this overtime rule. Remember Steve Spurrier, though, from Florida? He said, hey, what could be more fair? Each team gets the ball the same number of times in overtime. Jared Holmes in a must-make situation. He's missed two this year. That one is perfect. We head for a third overtime. Somebody call Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman and tell her she's going to have to wait a while. <laughs> Fred Beasley... Six feet, 220 pounds. Usually a fullback, they're going to put him at tailback in this situation. He's going to get behind Kevin McLeod with a good lead block right there on the linebacker, and it's a touchdown. Push the pile. We got a tie ball. Craig lost the football, but he broke the plane of the end zone. They call it a touchdown. He was across the plane of the end zone before lost the football. Touchdown Auburn. Wow. <laughs> uh, I've never seen so many different kind of plays in a football game. Look how close the ball is. He's doing about the six inch line. Look at the football. It's over. It's clearly over. No question. Good call that time by the crew of umpires and referees. Extra point is good. And now the burden is on the Georgia offense. They need seven to force a fourth overtime. First and goal to nine. Edwards, huge hole, cuts it inside, touchdown! And we're an extra point away from the fourth overtime. Oh, it's Dick Tomey of Arizona, I believe, was in the fourth overtime. Faked an extra point. He didn't want to go on any further. So the game needs to end right here. He said, I had it win up. or lose on one play. <laughs> I don't think Jim Donner is going to do that. They lost, yeah. by the way, yeah, Arizona. Exactly. Hap Hines. It is good. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> Little closer to the upright than he envisioned. Woo! He breathes the big sigh of relief as he looks skyward. Hat pulled that wedge a little bit too quickly, didn't he? But both offensive lines continue to dominate as the defenses get more and more tired. Offset, eye formation, good block on the corner by the fullback. And now Edwards cuts inside to KO. Does not make the tackle to Keo Spikes, and it's a touchdown. To the backfield by Torin Kirksey. Salma Callaway, the fullback. Pitch to Kirksey. Kirksey waltzes into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. And they go back on top. 55-49 with the extra point to come. I mean, the way George is playing right now, this is this is Vince Dooley years and years ago getting the I formation, toss sweep, counter trade, just smash mouth power football, and 
Jimmy Dunn and couldn't be prouder of this group the way they come back. They came back today. Hap Hines' last PAT at a narrow margin. This one right down the middle. And again, Auburn will need seven points on the next possession to force a fifth overtime. Well, we've talked about Hines Ward as a receiver. We've also talked about him as a runner. Let's see what happens him as a blocker. Turns around, critical situation. What kind of athlete is he? Cut block right on the corner. Jason Gray goes down, chopping wood. Fourth down and three. We've seen all kinds of offense today from Auburn. They have a variety of weapons. Well, if I'm Joe Kynes, what I'm saying is Damian Craig is the key guy here. Fourth and three. If they get in the gun, watch him on draw or in that little shuffle pass. If they're not in gun, you still have to keep contain on him. Watch Damian Craig. He's the focal point of this offense. Well, you're Georgia, you're three and five. One play, you make, you win the game. Would you be tempted to come after him here? I mean, even if they score, you... They're going to go to another overtime. They're in their normal set shotgun now. That's what we heard Coach Kine say. Craig needs the 15. Yeah, no, they're going to get there. Georgia wins in four overtimes. just talked who would they go to in a key situation and I think Joe Kynes made his guys aware of the fact that one way or another Damian Craig was going to be involved in the final play of this game and it certainly was. Get a good look he's going to come right towards us they pet they've got four people out in front blocking for him Georgia does a great job from the inside out the play is made by number 98 Defensive tackle Jermaine Smith with the biggest play of his. It has his greatest moment as Georgia coach. Let's go to Gus. Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama, as the Crimson Tide has just taken the field. And just a few moments ago, the United States Postal Service unveiled the design of a Paul Bear Bryant commemorative stamp. Members of the Bryant family were on hand. The design, by the way, is the fourth and final design of a four-stamp set honoring Bear Bryant, George Hallis, Pop Warner, and Vince Lombardi, a tribute to four individuals who have influenced the game of football in such a great way. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin, and welcome once again to primetime college football here on ESPN. There are rivalries, and there are rivalries, and then there's Alabama and Auburn. 28, 254, two touchdowns, but the figure on the right is the one that makes you cream. Yeah, pretty good numbers except for that one. Safety valve, Riddle turns it upfield, cuts it back into the middle, has the first down, and runs over his own man. Buchanan was looking around, didn't know what to block or what, he got run over. That's just like a runner. First down and over midfield. Kitchens from the shotgun. Again, they swing it out. Riddle cuts it forward. He may have another first down. Yes, he does. Now, the official is saying continue to roll the clock, which it will. But that same thing again. Going to go for the end zone. He's got a man there, and pass interference is going to be called. Vaughn had gotten behind the defensive back. Charles Rose, Ron. Just ate him up. Went right over the top of him. Charles Rose probably made a good move on this particular play, taking the interference. We have pass interference against the defense. 15. Okay, Freddie Kitchens again getting outside, hanging this football up. Let's see if Charles Rose, number 31, see he was face guarding all the way on Michael Vaughn. But you're right. Back there. They're having success going to him. Kitchens steps up into the pocket, pumps it. He'll run inside the 10, and he's down to the 9. Brumbaugh makes the tackle. 102, down to 101. Alabama has no timeouts left. 
In one of their touchdowns early in the ball game, they hit Michael Vaughn on a quick slant pattern. 47, down to 46, second and one. Pass right over the middle, hits him in the hand, dropped it, then did he catch it? Can't tell. They're going to say yes. It is first and goal, Alabama. He juggled it twice and then came down with it. Ron, that was a slant pass right there to Michael Vaughn. If he'd have caught it on the first catch, might have scored. Yeah. Had a chance. But you got to give him a lot of credit making the second catch. Clock is rolled back in, down to 37, down to 36. Tenth play of the drive, swings out the pass, and thrown too low for Riddle. Kitchen swings it out to Riddle. At the five, he will score! seconds left now it is not an automatic the kicking game has not been 100 percent for the crimson no, Tide. they still got to make this extra point auburn's going to come off the corner hard block with the attempt gets a good pass kick is up alabama on top by one gets the touchdown. Ron, I want to say one thing here as you see Gene Stallings. I'll tell you, credit Freddie Kitchens. Now, he threw three interceptions, but he was able to bring his club back on the key drive. Now, Terry Baum still has 26 seconds. Scrimmage is the 40-yard line. They've dropped all the way back to the 10 and 15-yard line. Looks like a kickoff return. Damian Craig, everything he's got. And it is knocked away by Alabama. Today, the two meet as the Crimson Tide play host to the Razorbacks in our Bell South SEC Game of the Week. fourth down. That set the whole tone. Here's your game for Alabama. Fourth and 18. Incomplete. That should do it. We'll put it into it. One way or the other. Tension. Looking high and deep. It is all over. The Razorbacks have done it for the first time back to back in Brad Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa since 55 and 56. Danny Ford 
to a little embarrass this team, wanted to raise him uh, going to see Mike DuBose, the player that meant a lot to him as a freshman coach. Arkansas wins it again by one. Back after a word from your local SEC stations.